couple days ago, AOC went live on Instagram to address the situation with Joe Biden, whether or not he's going to step down. And it was truly bizarre. I'm going to be honest. It was truly bizarre, guys. She rambled for about an hour. Uh, she didn't really seem to have a concise message or anything to say. Uh, she definitely is not assuming in any way the position of a leader uh, when it comes to the progressive left. She just kind of sat there and like rambled in a weird conspiracy conspiratorial, paranoid. She's a word salad machine at this point. She doesn't say anything. She's good at filling airtime on Instagram with the who, the what, the how. Uh, understanding the mechanisms are so important. It's imperative if we're going to you know, really change the game, guys. And yeah. what I think we could do is stop thinking about the now and start thinking about the how. Yeah, this is. I, I think this whole attempt on her part is so misguided. And we're going to talk about a couple of reasons why in a second, um, but let's take a look at just a little bit of this live stream on Instagram. I was watching it live and just like, you know, shaking my head, yeah. like what the hell are you doing AOC? The reality and the gravity of what is being, what these people are proposing. And I'm not saying this is all a reason not to do it, but I do think that people are talking about this without having two eyes wide open as to what this really means. Um, the Democratic Convention is in, what, four weeks or so? Um, the state of Ohio has legal ballot access issues that require a she sounds like she's doing an oral report that she hasn't prepped for, right? Yeah. I used to do this thing called forensics. When I was in high school, I got stuck doing it for a whole semester. I thought it was going to be the CI, uh, CSI crime scene investigation forensics. And instead, it's like this bullshit knockoff debate. <laughs> and the only thing that you didn't have to prepare for was this uh, you know, competition called extemporaneous speeching. And I was uh, speaking and I have ADHD. I was like, I can speak extemporaneously. But sometimes they would give me a topic that I knew absolutely nothing about. Like one time I got candle making and I was up there i just had to stand up there for five minutes and be like guys i don't know anything about candle making you, you it seems wax, really candle, lame you... i'm not a 40 year old woman in the suburbs with a half <laughs> bottle of merlot so i'm not interested in candle making this is kind of uh the energy i was bringing lots of long pauses you know candle making right it's just yeah. it seems like she has absolutely no interest in the topic that she's discussing like she's not a leader if yeah. you want biden to be president just say it say i endorse the president and shut the hell up to everyone else who says otherwise stand with biden ride with biden like if that's your position then say it uh but what we're about to watch is another three minutes of the most ridiculous sort of technocratic hand wringing. This, it, it, AOC telling us why Biden has to be president is eerily, it, it sounds eerily similar to like a neoliberal Democrat telling you why you can't have Medicare for all. You know what I'm saying? Oh, trust me. I know it sounds nice, but for the various, you know, process reasons that I'm about to list, it, it's just not feasible. That's what we're about to hear. Yeah. Name to be enrolled and certified on their ballot even before the convention. And that's not because of Democrats, that's because of Republicans. And to people, there are some people that quibble and they say, oh, well, that's not really true because they actually passed this other law that allows the, the deadline to change. That law that allowed that deadline to quote unquote change also gets enacted and enrolled something like 60 or 90 days after September passage, 1st, which now puts us in a legal gray zone. Oh my God. So whether you think it's above board or whether you don't think it's above board, I can tell you it's a legal that gray it zone. is guaranteed and it is virtually guaranteed. And it has been confirmed by the Republican Speaker of the House that Republicans are already preparing legal challenges. Oh my God. Republicans are preparing yeah. legal challenges in Ohio, a state the Democrats have a whopping 0% chance of winning. Yeah, this is so this is hilarious. Uh, a AOC here, um, she's referencing these Heritage Foundation threats, right? So the Republican Party and the Trump campaign specifically, they're shitting their pants 
about the fact that Joe Biden's not going to be the nominee because they thought they had the easiest layup in history. They thought they were just going to waltz to November victorious and win in a landslide, right? So now they're freaking out behind the scenes, realizing that it's actually going to be a race, that the Democrats are going to be actually back in this thing, and they're actually going to have to try, right? So what are they doing? Uh, they're threatening all these stupid lawsuits, right? Uh, it, but that's all it is. It's a threat. And instead of calling their bluff, uh, like she should, AOC is instead cowering to the right, to the Heritage Foundation and saying, oh, uh, the Heritage Foundation said we can't do it. So I guess we can. We wouldn't want to risk the Supreme Court deciding the election. No, that's not going to fucking happen, bro. If you do this right at the convention, make Kamala the VP, whatever, make anyone the VP. It's going to be fine. You mean the presidential nominee? Yeah, sorry. The, the top of the ticket. It's going to be fine. You can't cower to these ridiculous threats from the Heritage Foundation. Because also, they... does she really think that a legal battle is going to go between November, so, sorry, from September 1st to November 5th? Or I believe it's the I think it's Guy Fox Day, actually, is when the election mm -hmm. is this year. So. Uh, what's that 35 days you think they're going to be able to get a legal challenge off the board and also by the way it'll be irrelevant because all of the electoral college votes in ohio will go to donald trump it's not going to happen i saw people asking in chat if ohio's purple kind of but not for the presidential race it's kind of like missouri purple like maybe a good democrat could win uh in mm -hmm. uh, a like senate race or something like that but in the electoral college no way they're going to go for donald trump especially now um Obama was the last Democrat to win Ohio. Uh, even Joe Biden got clobbered in Ohio in 2020. So I wouldn't expect it to go any other way. Uh, so again, this is all just horseshit coke from AOC. And it's stuff that I would expect to hear from Joe Manchin. It's stuff that I would expect to hear from Kristen Cinema, And that's how I know that her Obamification is almost complete. She's about to be the next Nancy Pelosi, dude. And it breaks my heart because I really believed in this lady. I think you really believed in this lady. It was yep. the next generation. We were riding... Uh, this wave so hard in 2018 when it felt over when it felt crippling and crushing in 2018 uh when donald trump was president we didn't know if bernie was going to run again it felt like the movement was really getting stomped down boy did we have even worse times coming but aoc was a rising star cory bush was a rising star that knocked down the house documentary gave everybody momentum it inspired us. We had hope again. And now she's just completely sold us all down the river. She's become what we've honestly been forecasting. I realized this for four years, Gavin. We've pretty much been documenting AOC, abandoning her leftist principles. We talked about our first term, her first two years in Congress, when she was doing shit like live tweeting through the uh, you know freshman Congress orientation oh, yeah. and talking about how bullshit it was, all the funding that you had to do and how much of their time they wanted you to spend phone banking and calling donors and bringing in money for the democratic party and oh if you want this cabinet position and you want to do this job then you better raise this much money and you better compete with this guy who brings in this much money and i'm sorry you're doing it without you know corporate dollars these guys aren't doing it without corporate dollars and you better make sure you're as competitive as them that was all based she was occupying nancy pelosi's office she was demanding a green new deal you know what i mean uh, now that's completely gone. Her Obamification is complete. And she's going to, I think, sell people on the fact that she's still Sandy from the Bronx, that she's still a bartender that knows what it's like to struggle. Right. Um, and um, yeah, I think I think we were beginning to see the end of the road. Yeah. And it's really a, a unfortunate one because she's, I think, going to cause a lot of problems for the left down the road with her ability to cosplay as one of us. Oh, 100 percent. She's done with the left. She already got kicked out of the DSA. They revoked her endorsement. I don't know if you saw that. That was a couple of weeks ago. Um, but yeah, this is ridiculous from AOC. And it's not just ridiculous from like a moral perspective or from a leftist perspective. I think it's deeply misguided from a strategic perspective. Millennium asks, uh, please explain me. It's, please explain to me AOC's strategy here riding with Biden, because I don't know what the fuck she's doing. Uh, so, I mean, the obvious thing we've talked about is that she wants to run in 2028. She wants the, uh, she wants the, a, a clear field. field. Yeah. Yep. She doesn't want to have to deal with Kamala Harris being like the, you know, next in line coronated incumbent essentially in 2028. If in fact she gets the nomination this time around, but here's why I think this is completely, completely stupid and ridiculous. AOC is like trying desperately right now to curry favor with Joe Biden. She's clearly trying to get on his good side. Guess what, AOC? Joe Biden is not going to be the Democratic nominee. He's definitely not going to be the next president, but he's not even going to be the next Democratic nominee. So you're trying to curry favor with someone who's going to be out of power in a matter of months. If you were at all intelligent about having sway, any sort of sway within the next administration, you'd be buttering up Kamala Harris. 
Well, she wants Donald. I think this is conspiracy tinfoil hat time. Sorry, guys. I think that she I don't know if wants is the right word. I don't I don't want to say she wants it, but I think she's so delusional about her ability to do whatever she's fanatical thing. She's got that Obama narcissism. I think Obama really thought he was the guy that was going to pull all the strings and do everything for, you know, everybody. Meanwhile, just serving himself in his own careerism, obviously, right? The veneer was doing everything for everyone. AOC thinks that if she can just get in after Donald Trump, then she can really turn the country around. And I don't believe that Kamala is going to be able to do it. So we're going to have to, you know, do some serious fundraising and serious hard work during the Donald Trump administration. Here's what else she knows. She is going to become a huge mainstream media star yep. in her resistance to Trump era yep. over the next four years if he gets reelected. Now, this is cynical. This is narcissistic. But that's what AOC has showed us she is. She has shown us she's not interested in a fight. She is interested in her own ladder climbing, right? She wants to be the next Nancy Pelosi. She wants to be a Hillary Clinton. She wants to be a Dianne Feinstein. She wants to be a powered on of the Democratic Party. And she's decided that this is her time to do it. Yep. So she's going to wait. And then she's going to strike when the iron's hot. And she is going to basically... I think if, if it ever comes up, like, why did you make this decision? For, throw Bernie Sanders under the bus. You might, you know, we thought that uh, it was the best if we unified the party. We were trying to stand behind the party. Me and Bernie Sanders know that, you know, we're the left flank and we wanted to unify behind Democrats. Like, I just think yeah. she'll just lie through her fucking teeth, man. Also, bro, I literally watched the entire live stream uh, as it happened live on air. And yes, I know she talked outside of both sides of her mouth, especially towards the end. And she said, you know, whether you're, whether you're uh, coconut pilled or riding with Biden, then that's cool. Like, you know, do whatever you got to do. I know this is ma like she talked outside of both sides of her mouth, but don't be fucking fooled, bro. That live stream was 100 percent a piece of propaganda for Joe Biden staying the nominee. That is what it was. Just like uh, Bernie. 100 percent. I it, it felt like there was a fucking dude holding a, a gun to her head. Just just fucking, you know, a few pixels off screen. Uh, it felt like a hostage video, bro. That was 100% propaganda to manufacture consent among the progressive left online for Joe Biden staying at the top of the ticket. And a bunch of her dutiful fucking drones immediately started, you know, retweeting and saying, look at all these great points that AOC just made. If if we, uh, you know, choose a candidate that could actually win, then the Heritage Foundation is going to sue us and the Supreme Court's going to decide the election. All of this unhinged fear mongering and paranoid fucking gaslighting um when in reality the iceberg is right ahead and aoc is refusing to fucking turn the wheel 100 percent uh he tried to walk it back and now he was trying to take a shot at me gavin you won he, he roasted <laughs> that guy he's ashamed now okay uh anyway i'm sorry we hurt your feelings with our aoc commentary bro i've watched this woman do a complete 180. And do you know who else has done complete 180s on their politics? Every single person who ever decided to become a lifer in American politics. They all started out as young, progressive starlets. Uh, Nancy Pelosi was a big, young, progressive insurgent in San Francisco. Why? Because she didn't hate gay people. She was like, oh, yeah, you know, Harvey Milk was a hero. And everybody was like, she's so brave, right? Uh, that's what AOC will have become. Back, They'll be like, back in 2016, she was a real firebrand. She was a real, you know, uh, or 2018 yep. or whatever. You and know again, what I'm saying? it's a post-Bernie era. So there is not even really that much of a left anymore to hold her accountable. It's going to be the easiest transition ever. She's going to become like an Elizabeth Warren Democrat at best. That's the best we can hope for, that she's like a Warren kind of Democrat. Like, yeah, oh, so still a party loyalist. Yeah, exactly. 100%. I'm not saying she would be a bad president in comparison to who else we would have. It's just such a far cry. And I don't, I don't know if she would win, and I don't, I don't know about all of that. But if you guys don't think that's in the back of her mind, you're a mark, bro. If you, got, if you guys think that the end of her career ambition is being, you know, Sandy the Bronx congressman, AOC, yeah. no, and it's also, not it. Bro, like Zach said, we've been watching this shit for a while now, literally every single day as our job. We've been and tracking. You've always, everybody's always said the same thing. It's like, you guys are too harsh on AOC. She really means the best as she sells us down the fucking river. Yeah, name a single, uh, give me a single example, Nicholas, in the last two three years, what get even four years of AOC actually genuinely resisting the establishment, like seriously in any real way trying to 
use her influence, celebrity she power. She called for a ceasefire, Gavin. Yeah, it, coming up for a ceasefire is like the closest thing you could say. And uh, what does that even mean if you're now going to become the strongest supporter of the dude who's sponsoring the genocide? You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, this guy who's literally doing the genocide that I called out and accurately identified as a genocide. Bernie Sanders said it was Biden's Vietnam. And now he's out here clamoring for him to be the nominee. I'm like, you want the guy doing the Vietnam War to be the nominee and we can't do any better than that? What the fuck is wrong with you people? Yeah. Anyways, I know it hurts, guys. I know it hurts. I also <laughs> don't want it to be true. But if you're expecting AOC to come out for you, she just won't. I think the last time she did real activism was when she showed up after the uh, uh, you know, overturning of Roe v. Wade. So it's like she will show up for things like abortion rights, but that's a safe Democratic Party position to take. She also did a photo op with Joe Biden where they both wore aviator sunglasses, right? You know what I mean? She yeah. also pretended that he fought climate change as he was doing the Willow Project. You guys want to play this game with us? Oh, Galaxy Brain, you guys don't know. You're just being hard on AOC. Like, come on, bro. I do this every fucking day, and so does Gavin. Gavin's a little smarter than me. So uh, you're right. Uh, but <laughs> it's crazy. Come on. You guys are just like, it's hope. It, it, it's copium and it's hopium that she's going to change and actually be the AOC that she used to be. But guess what, guys? Uh, she's not. Yeah, she's and, not coming back. And some people are like, you guys are wrong about her wanting to run for president. Even if we are wrong about that and she doesn't want, want to run for president, she, Zach's still 100% right about her wanting to become, you know, the next Diane Fox. Oh, she wants to run for president. Nancy Pelosi. And those people never even ran for president, but they're still, they were still the most powerful people in the Democratic Party. I mean, Nancy Pelosi arguably is, besides Joe Biden, the most powerful person in the Democratic Party. I'd rather be Nancy Pelosi than Hillary Clinton because Hillary Clinton got publicly humiliated about 80 million times. Exactly. Exactly.